What's up YouTube, Derby Roll World Order coming at you with another video. Today I'm going to post about a project. Um, going to explain some of the stuff I learned doing these kind of projects and whatnot. Hopefully save y'all some headache and time and frustration. So we got here a panel hitch. And we got us a dump truck. So we're actually, we're going to be installing this panel hitch on this dump truck today. Now, this is a more ideal scenario for installing a panel hitch on a truck. It's already, you know, very heavily built. You know, the plate is already welded into, as you can see right there, the plate's welded into the frame. You know, this, was, this plate was put on correctly. So, as a two-inch receiver here, the customer wants a actual pentel lock installed on here. And he wants it up here above the two-inch receiver. So basically right about back in here. Normally, what I like to do is I like to put a plate on the back side, right? You know, weld a plate on the back side center and drill my holes for the pentel and bolt the pentel. That way it's pulling like one giant washer from the back. However, due to the fact that there is a gas tank right there, not going to be able to do that, which isn't going to hurt anything. I'm just going to put the plate on the front. Now, in times gone past, I have built these just as a square and welded on, right? Science has now taught us otherwise that it's better to have a plate that is that shape if my drawing makes any sense actually let me draw it out not a square but kind of a roundish tab with wings that's what I'm talking about right here don't want to do this no more we want to do that all right and this is the same as that inside right there Especially concerned, you know, it's a high stress application, right? That's one piece, but you know, that's just the example. There's a high stress piece, and when you when they pull on it, instead of transferring all that stress to the corners, like these sharp corners right here, instead of transferring all the stress to the sharp corners here, it makes all that stress fan out evenly. And spreads it out nice and even. And having these rounded edges. That one won't didn't quite draw around. But and these rounded edges right here. Causes it to evenly distribute the weight. And have no real sharp points. That it can start cracking from. So this is the new method I'm going to start using. I've had no issues with the square. But better be safe than sorry. Now that we know there's a better method to use. We're going to start using a better method. So, you can see, get quadrants of six by six. The center one doesn't have a line, a horizontal line going through it. The outside ones do. That marks our center right there. So we can put our round jig. In this case, I'm just going to use a paint can for our round jig. Put that there, center, draw a circle around it. Then put it over here, draw a circle around it. Then take the straight edge, go from the corner where it intersects into that circle, the corner where it intersects, and do that on all of these. Do that on all of these. We should get what we're looking for. Without going into too much math and nonsense, that seems like the easiest way to go about this, to get us something nice and even. You can see, here's the edge of the circle, there's our corner. And we just draw that line right to it, just like that. And that'll give us that result right there. And there we go. That's what it looks like now. Now we can just take our finger and kind of go through and erase all the stuff we don't need. What really sucks is most of your welding schools aren't teaching this. They aren't teaching layout. They just kind of, alright, uh, put these two pieces of metal together. Let me know, right? And in a lot of jobs, they have a dedicated person that does just this. But when you run your own business, you need to know how to lay this kind of stuff out. And I wish people had shown me this a lot sooner. And there we go. Now we have our pattern to cut. And these corners look sharp, 
but I'm actually going to kind of round them with the torch when I come up to them, just so we're 100%, you know, there's really much sharp angles involved in this. Just want to try and keep it, keep it round so there's no stress points. And look at that, I mean, it just fits the pental hitch in there so nice. That's going to look really good up on the truck. And so we can go take a closer look. This truck has been up north. I can tell just by that right there, it's been up north. So it's got some kind of coating on here. That's all going to have to come off where we're going to put that plate. I'm going to take a grinder. That stuff's thick enough. We're going to need a grinder for rock wheel. Reason is, I'm going to be using dual shield. And I want this to be really, really clean. Because of how critical it is. So, we're going to take grinder for rock wheel. Clean this whole area up. You know, just to get it back to bright metal. After we, you know, after we cut our plate. And, you know, we'll clean up the edges of the plate and whatnot. Get all the oxidation off. Then once we've done that, we'll make a center line here and a center line here. Then we'll draw new center lines on our plate and you'll be able to line them up. Boom. That'll put that plate dead center right there. And then we put our pencil dead center on those lines. We mark our holes and we take the mag drill and drill the holes. I ain't no IC weld, but it got the general shape right. Give it a little grinding here and there, kind of smooth it out. It'll be just fine. And if y'all didn't see in the video here, I'm wearing my, my Miller um, welding respirator. You gotta keep that grinder dust out, man. That's like powdered cancer. Ooh, got to give that MIG gun a second to cool off some. You saw I'm wearing a respirator because there's still paint and um, this stuff right here, dual shield can be quite, um, can be quite smoky. You don't want to be breathing that stuff in. So, the, so apparently this thing is dented right here, like along right there, it's dented. Probably from this bed coming back. So... From there to there, that side it required one buttering pass and two cover passes. This required two buttering passes right there to kind of butter it up. And I'm going to do two more passes over it just to even it up. This is the nice thing about dual shields. It makes, you know, when something don't fit quite right, that's kind of out of your control. The dual shield makes fixing it a whole lot easier. Like in this particular case, if I had to stick weld it, I could, but... I'll be here for an hour fixing it. But the dual shield, I'll probably only spend 30, 45 minutes welding it.
So I thought I had a hiccup here on this. I was looking at it going, I know I centered my plate in the center of the pencil hitch. Why is it not centered on a two inch receiver? And why is it kind of just tilting to one side a little bit? If mathematically everything should be fine. Well, I don't know how, how well you can see it. But somebody rear-ended this plate. Or something happened. So that's just throwing everything out of whack. Even that 2 inch receiver is kind of jacked sideways. So I'll just have to inform the customer that... You know, th this is the best I could do considering, you know, the plate's all goofy. Alright guys, here's the final product. It does look a little goofy because... That two inch receiver being tweaked one way, but I had to go buy some longer bolts. That's why there's a gold bolt instead of the original black ones, but they're still grade eight, torqued to 100 pounds, just like the instructions said.